Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Chiseled. And why do we call it Chiseled? Because we're all the work in progress. I'm your host, Rob Commodore. I'm also the author of the book, Better Than You Think and Next Level Your Life. I co-authored with several other authors. I am, I've been the host of this podcast for coming up on three years now. Today, I have a guest, Katie Kiliszewski. Her dad, I, I've known her dad forever, became friends with him. We went to the same high school together. We've done some business together. Katie is in the insurance industry. She's been doing that for about 11 or 12 years, married with three kids. And Katie's going to share a story with us. With the, I, I guess it's uh, something that a, a lot of younger girls, teenage girls, have gone through in their life. And, and, and she battled... Uh, I guess an issue, a problem, and she's she's gotten through it, and, and now she's alive, she's kicking, and she's on fire. And it, it, it's great to see some of the things she's doing. She's doing ultra runs and marathons, and, and she's just kicking butt and taking names. So I'm so happy for her. I'm so excited for her to share her story today. Katie, thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you. I appreciate this opportunity, and I'm so excited to be here. It really feels like, look, am I going to cry right away? Um it's okay. It feels, like, it feels like a gift to be here to be able to share, you know, my kind of comeback story. Um, we don't always get to pick our challenges. And, um, you know, I struggled a lot when I was younger with some, you would never know it by looking at me, um, but I had low self esteem and um, lacked some confidence. And um, when I was 14 years old, I was diagnosed with anorexia. And that journey was kind of like a storm that I walked through for close to half of my life. Um, I was so young that when the eating disorder behavior started, um, I didn't know what I was doing. It seemed like I was being healthy. I, um, I didn't know what anxiety was. I didn't know what depression was. And, um, yeah, it just seemed like I was running to get in shape. I was eating healthy. I didn't know what I was doing. So when I was diagnosed with it, um, it was a shock. And if you know anything about eating disorders, um, it is an addiction it's a mental and physical addiction. And the longer that you live with it, the more it kind of brainwashes you. And um, you really, you're not the same person that you used to be. Um, it's kind of like you get this other personality that takes over. Like you come, you become obsessed with it. You're, you're obsessed. So my thoughts were extremely obsessive. It's all I could think about burning calories, running calories in, calories out, what I'm going to eat, what I'm not going to eat. It was, you're like, you're on this sick merry-go-round and you're just kind of crazy. And, um, you know, it's, I think I was, because I was so young, I didn't know anyone else going through it. There was a couple other girls at my high school and, you know, it was nice that we did have that kind of bond, but you also kind of feel alone because you're going through something so big at such a young age and then you're dealing with all the other kind of things that you're dealing with in middle school and high school and you don't really know how um you know how to handle it and it was a really it's a it was a coping issue i didn't know it then but i know it now that i was in a lot of pain and um you know things really got bad when i was in my later teenage years and kids start drinking. And I started drinking. I had never drank before that. Like I was afraid of it. <laughs> and then I started and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can turn my brain off. Like, <laughs> and um, I started, that's when I really started like, you know, it was kind of like ping pong, um, just drinking to turn my brain off to numb myself. And that's when things really took a turn for the worst for me. And so, uh, I you know. real quick, Katie, like for, so you were, you had the eating disorder and then did, did you like stop that and start drinking to, for the same coping issue? I was doing both at the same time. And it, that was a cycle that went on for a really long time. I would 
not drink for a while and be very active in the eating disorder. And then I just couldn't shut it off and I would drink to cope with it. And it kind of went like back and forth um, for a really, really long time. Um, yeah, it was, um, I look back on that time today and I know I put myself in so many harmful situations. I do just feel extremely lucky to be alive and, and be here today. Yeah. And, I, and I'm grateful for you sharing today. If you said something early on, you like when you're younger, the, the low self-esteem and, and, and the, uh, the, you know, led to some of the anorexia, anorexia stuff. The, do you think some of that was, was a result of like comparing with other comparing, competing to other like girls your age at that time? Um, I think, I think some of it was, I've tried to think back to my childhood to see if there was anything that caused it. I was a little bit bigger when I was younger. I wasn't fat. Like when I look back now, I think my image of myself was kind of like distorted. So I was made fun of when I was younger. And I remember that was the first time I ever experienced feeling like insecure, like I just wanted to disappear, like there was something wrong with me. Um, I don't think that caused it. I think that I was kind of, because I am a very sensitive person and I feel things very deeply, I think that I do kind of like internalize everything. But then at the same time, uh, I was very competitive. And I think the competitiveness caused me to compare but i don't know if that's when i was also sick it would be like what is she eating what is she you know how fast is she like and it was those kind of things where it was like the competitiveness and the comparing got out of control yeah it's uh i get the competitive thing man because there's so many people out there they're, they're so competitive and and i think it, sometimes it is my whole yeah go ahead go ahead my whole my whole family is very competitive, but in, in different ways. We we like to make a game out of anything, but yeah, never play yeah. me in a board game. Yeah, because I, th I think there's a healthy competitive nature and then there's an unhealthy. And I think sometimes, you know, me, me personally, I like I'm like, hey, okay, like I, I played ball, I played college ball and I you know, played different sports growing up and you want to compete and you want to win and you want to you got to beat the other person out for the start position. But mm -hmm. like in, in, as far as life goes, the comparison that, that I go by now is am I am I better than I was yesterday? I just want to compare myself to I was yesterday. I just want to be the best person. I could be, and it's like comparing myself to to the unique gifts and abilities that I've been given. Am I am I excelling at that? That's some of the comparison that that I go. That's, I coach myself through now because I do have that competitive fever, and I and I I totally feel that. I totally feel that, and I get it. Yeah, and I'm I'm very similar today. Like every night, I that's the only thing I'm like, God, let me be better tomorrow than I was today. But like. Yeah. Back back then, it was a totally different story. It's like, got to be the best, got to be the fastest. I have to work harder, you know, and the list goes on. But um, yeah, I think I had all of these things that were a part of me that kind of made that perfect storm. Yeah. I got to ask this question from a competitive side. This is kind of funny. Like, like do you, you, do you use GPS at all? You know, like uh, Waze or any of those things? Uh, I just use the maps in my car. <laughs> And you know how it shows you when you how much time it's going to take to get there and when you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Do you compete against the, the GPS? <laughs> sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't know if it knows what it's talking about. But I'm uh -huh. just, oh my gosh, how can it? But yeah, I do, will try to like if I feel like there's a faster way to get there, do uh -huh. that. To see if it cuts time off to see if it's wrong. But yes, <laughs> my wife thinks I'm crazy because like like we'll go somewhere and I'll put the 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 ways on and she goes, why are you putting it on? She, you know how to get there. And I said, yeah, I just want to know if I can beat the time that it gives me. <laughs> <laughs> so call that a sickness, call it hurry yeah. up sickness or whatever you want. It's a game. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a game within a game, right? There's always right. a game. <laughs> so, so yeah. So what I, what I want to, something I want to share with you is that years ago, I, I, um, I saw I saw Joe Urban speak. I don't know if you know that name. He, it's before your time, but your dad knows him. I'm sure he played for the Baltimore Colts, and he, his his brother died. And Joe was a big bad you know football player, and and his 
in his world to be a man, you had to, it was about the build fold, the bedroom, and the ball field. You had to be real athletic. You had to have a lot of money. You had to be able to be you know, a, a womanizer, right? right? And that was the lie that the men bought into. The lie that women bought into, he would say, was body type and size, materialism, and, and, and money, I guess it was. So we buy into these lies at an early age sometimes, and do we get caught up in it? And that starts to compare the Excuse me, the comparison and the competing thing. I don't know if that happened for you, but I that, do. I yeah. think that has a lot to do with it. And I think that's why, like, to me today, like, you are the story that you tell yourself and you are what you consume. You are who your friends are. So, whatever you're watching on TV, whatever you're listening to, that's what is you're going to be into. Like, so yes, when I was younger, I would, you know, see the pretty, who's the pretty girl in this movie? Every, oh, everybody likes her. Like I need to be this type, look this way, dress this way. And it's almost like through my journey, I've had to figure out who am I? Like, yeah. What do I even like? How do I like to dress? Like, yeah. you know, which is like, it's part of being authentic. It's part of being, you know, unique. And I think that that's not emphasized enough. I, I make sure my kids, you know, like, do you love that? Like, I always, I try to like, you know, see who they are, you know, yeah. instead of telling them what I like, you know? <laughs> Well, it's funny you said you. I want to be unique, right? And and some people, I'm, I'm glad you said it because I think some people say they they're afraid to be different, right? And, and mm -hmm. unique to me means you're different, and and it's okay yeah. to be different. It's okay to be you, and I think mm -hmm. that's a big piece of transparency. Like you know, all, all I'm hearing is Katie saying, "I want to be the best Katie I can be. I want to dress the way I want to dress the way I'm comfortable." Right. But you, mom, I'm supposed to be the way I want to be, and uh, and that's something that's it's great. So. You know, kudos to you for discovering that. So I guess my follow up to that's going to be, when did you, what, 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 what was the trigger that said, okay, no more. When, when did you, when did you start healing? Um, so I, this had been going on from when I think I started engaging in eating disorder behaviors. I was, I was young, like I wasn't diagnosed till I was, 14, 15, but it started when I was in elementary school, like 11 or 12. And it went on until my late twenties. And in that time I had been like, I, I had been in and out of, I think five or six different inpatient hospital units. Uh, my parents sent me down to Florida for three months. I was in and out of therapy twice a week, group therapy. And I remember um, I, the therapist I had seeing, or I had been seeing at that time, I had just gotten really drunk, ended up in the hospital, went to see her. And um, even though I did all these things, I was really, really honest. Like I always, cause if I hit it, it would come out eventually. So I'm like, <laughs> Here, here's what I did, like, and what are we going to do? And she, she always would, she could get me really fired up. I would get really mad at this woman. And okay. um, she said, like, you know, Katie, you have the worst eating disorder I've ever seen. If you don't start making changes, you will never get better. And I also hated being told what to do. She said, you need to see this doctor. You need to come to therapy this amount of times. You need to do this, this, and this. And I think I was just shocked because it was different than what, how it had been. But I also felt like I could not take one more single thing. And um, I did feel kind of beat down and tired of it. And I remember getting in the car because my dad had taken me to therapy and I said, dad, I'm done. Like, dad, I'm, I'm done. I, I can't do all of this stuff. I don't want to do all this stuff. I don't even want to go to therapy anymore. And I mean, like, thank God I, I do have like the most supportive family because they never left my side, like, especially my parents every single day. And they were like, they are like my number one fans. I feel like he just said, <laughs> okay, Kate, like, 
let's figure it out together. And um, I, I did. And it was so weird because you just then end up going through the motions, but then things start working out. And looking back now, I realized like, you know, yes, I was tired of it, but for any kind of change to happen, like no matter what you're trying to change, you have to be frustrated enough with the behavior to make it change. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the push and momentum that I needed to actually start going all in and committing to my recovery. Um, And it also felt like my whys became more powerful. Like I was dating Jacob, my husband now at that time. And like, we were like, I knew we would get married. I knew if I didn't change, then we wouldn't like, I would lose everything again. And I, like, I loved him. He was my best friend. And so I just, every time I, I felt like I was getting ready to lose more and more and more. So that's kind of how the ball started yeah. rolling, yeah. So you had one of those uh, like enough is enough moments, it sounds like. I did, yes. And um, thank God I did. <laughs> like, thank God. I thank God that there was still like some rational part of me left. But like, even though my story, like I look, I look back and I can see like there was so much pain like because I didn't really understand that I was actually in pain sometimes you just look back you're like why did I do that like that was that was so dumb like why why and then you realize that like even though like I look back and I'm so grateful because even though I was in so much pain I can see that I was surrounded by so much love like just I feel like God put these people in my life to keep me from drowning because if I had done it alone, I easily would have drowned, you know, in my pain or in my eating disorder. But I had so many people, I feel like that, like, they're like, not today, Katie. And they just kind of pulled me, like pulled me out of the ocean and just like, come with me, come with me. Like my parents, Oh, every single day. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. I got to ask you this question because there's obviously some emotion, you know, you're Mm -hmm. sharing right now. And is that emotion, does it come from the pain of it? Does it come from the gratitude of the the family, the support that you have, or does it come from something else? Cause I think I'm one, I want to say thank you for sharing that emotion. Cause I think that's so important for people to be able to see this. And Oh, by the way, audience, this is Katie's first ever podcast. (laughs) So, so, uh, that's big why. <laughs> so big kudos to her. And, and and then we're going to get into your message here in a minute. But uh, yeah, if you want to share a little bit about maybe the, with that, where the emotions come from. Um, I think I am just a crier. I th- we had talked about, um, you know, I have a threat, a friend who said there's sandpaper people and there's cotton balls and cotton <laughs> balls kind of like just feel everything. And I think that I am highly sensitive and I do like absorb it all in and it just comes out as tears. They're, they're not sad, but sometimes even if I'm, I'm so mad instead of yelling, I'll cry. Like, and it doesn't make sense to me, <laughs> but I'm, I'll be crying. like, but I'm so mad. But, <laughs> but I think cause I just feel things more, but for that story, it's, it's gratitude. I try to build my foundation today on gratitude because like, we really are so lucky to be able to do the things that we do and have what we have. And I, yeah, I'm forever grateful for, you know, the people that saved me. Yeah. So if I can ask, like, how long was that journey? Like from the time you're diagnosed to the time you let's say beat it, because I'm sure, I don't know, do you still have to manage it today or you're, you're done with it? So I want to say it was like, it was close to, 15 years. Um, so all the way up, I say until about when I got married and then right after I got married, I ended up getting pregnant with Eloise. I knew, I knew that I needed to change. I knew that I could not have children, um, with an eating disorder. Like you just can't pass that kind of stuff on to them. So I needed to get over it and it's not that easy, but, um, I think I don't, I would say I'm in recovery. I don't think that you can ever recover from an eating disorder. I think it's like, 
it's an addiction. Like if you're an alcoholic, you wouldn't go back out and drink again. If you have an eating disorder, you do have it, but the thoughts go away. The more that you actually like live and I call it like choosing real happiness because you do become self-absorbed with the eating disorder and you kind of, you believe all these fake things that you tell yourself. Like that's why it brainwashes you. And you really like, there are even times today where I'm just like, I, I don't know, like about food. Like that's why with like, I'm, I'm into running and everything now. Like I ask an expert, like I have an expert nutritionist and I'm like, tell me, cause I don't, I don't know. And like, I, I don't know. So yeah, it's, um, it's something that you live with, but it gets easier. Good, good. Hey, so yeah. you said you're a runner. So so let's talk about all that. So yeah, you talked about some of this dark stuff. So let's talk about some of this stuff that you've gotten into because, look, I, I've known Katie for a while. Uh, she's a client of mine. We sold her their, their house. But uh, so she's not a realtor. So no. <laughs> I'm 75 percent realtors on the, on the show here. But uh, I, I like when I first met her, I saw her this quiet, quiet young woman. Right. But now mm -hmm. she's she is so on fire right now. And it's great to hear some of the things she's accomplishing. And as I stated in the uh, introduction, some of these things she's doing running, but uh, share, share with us one, how you got into running, which got started there. And then some of these things you've done recently, I think it was called hell on the hill. You did that mm -hmm. uh, with your dad. And so I'd like to hear about that. And then if you would uh, uh, share with how special it is to be doing it with your dad. Yeah, that is one of the coolest things. Um, so I guess I've, I'm, the, I'm the crier now. So <laughs> I feel better though. I'm not the only one. There you go. Um, so I've always been into running. I just started doing it for the wrong reasons. And, you know, um, it's been something I've come back to throughout the years right before I got pregnant with my son, um, I said to my husband, I want to run marathons. And then I ended up getting pregnant. So my goal was like, you know, after I have my son's name is Ben after Ben, I'm getting a treadmill, I'm training, I'm running marathon. And um, seven days into running, I, um, I fractured my leg. I ended up fracturing like 70% of my tibia. No one has even been able to figure out how, to, how it happened. But I, um, that was a very challenging time in my life because I had a newborn baby. I couldn't walk. I couldn't lift anything. Um, and I felt, I felt down. I was miserable for a couple months my mom like moved in with us like again thank god for the people that i have and the yeah. ones that checked on me because i was not okay <laughs> um <laughs> and yeah but we made we made it work and in like summer of 2022 my dad had always been in um for a few years one of jesse itzler do you know who he is yeah 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 I do. program so they opened it up that you could sign up mid year and my dad signed me up and it did really change my life. It changed my outlook on life. It kind of got me out of that feeling sorry for myself. Like why wow, I can't run. And I started to really think about things differently. And that's when I really started to feel like everything I've been through is for a reason. And, you know, I started to see things as a gift. Like, yes, I would be able to run again, but that's when I started, like, I started mentoring girls in eating disorder recovery during that time. I started focusing on giving back. Um, and that did change my life with the goal to be able to run hell on the hill um, for a cause, which my cause was the um, nonprofit that I mentored girls through. So, Jesse also puts on this race called Hell on the Hill. Um, and that was in May of 2023. We, my dad and I ran it. And it was the, like, I have three kids. And I'm going to say that this weekend even tops, like, it topped their birth. Like, the birth <laughs> of my children. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really, but like it I was, it. One of, it was one of the best weekends of my entire life. Um, people 
like I said, run for a cause. And that's the first time that I got up and shared my story ever in front of anyone. Like I have been so, I think there's a lot of shame that goes in to it. And a lot of people had been through a lot of things and got up there and shared. And then after we share, we, and it might not sound fun to you, we run up and down a hill um, <laughs> to the equivalent of a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles. And to the end of the race, I felt like I was in a movie. Um, so I ran the whole race with my dad, which like, I mean, I, I laugh at him the whole, <laughs> the whole time we go back and forth the whole time. Like it's, it was a lot of fun. Um, but everyone, it was 200 people. Everyone stayed around till the end of the race. You have 14 hour or I'm sorry, four hours to finish the race. And the last two girls, like, I, I love these girls. Like I have become very close with a couple people that I've met there. Um, they were on, like, they just had that attitude that I love that like never give up. Yeah. And we all joined in on the last lap um, with this girl, her name's Ruth Ann. And um, she just like, I, I don't know. She just, I felt like, she could do anything in the world. And at the top of the hill, she's like, let's go. And we all like went down. We all finished the race together. It was just really, really cool. Um, it was a great bonding experience. And I feel like that's the first time in a while where I was around people that shared the same priorities as me. And I kind of almost felt home. And I was like, these are my people. And mm -hmm. since then, yeah, I've I've been pretty good friends with a couple of people I met my running coach there. Um, yeah, it was it was the coolest. It was the coolest weekend. That's awesome. And what what was the coolest thing about it? it was there was it just the run, the bonding? What was the coolest thing about it? Um, I loved the run. I loved feeling like I was on a team. Like I loved it. There was no competition. Everyone was rooting for everyone. Everyone was pretty vulnerable, and it it felt like you could tell anybody anything and they would be there for you no matter what. Like, that's what is so cool. You're meeting these strangers and you can tell them things that you've never told your best friend and they would support you. Like yeah. that's like, it was so much compassion in one weekend. Yeah. And so how, how, I know we said it was special, but like, how has the relationship with your parents? And I say dad, cause you know, daddy's little right. girl and you guys are doing this together. But so how's, how's your relationship with your parents and specifically your dad grown over the, through this, these last few years? So we're like best friends. I've always said my mom and I have become like sisters. Uh -huh. My dad and I are like best friends. So after hell on the hill, um, so it, it was through All Day Running Company. That's Jesse's company that he puts these events on through. Yeah. All Day Running had a running festival in October. And um, you could pick your distance that you wanted to run. And my dad and I both ended up hiring a running coach and trained for a marathon together. And, like, it was just so cool to do it together. And you're talking to, like, your parent about, like, your run, it's like things that you don't think that you're going to end up talking to, you know, your parent about, but like, none of my friends would ever do any of this stuff with me. So I'm like, I'm going out with my like 60 year old dad running and we got to like, we got to share a tent together. I've never slept outside before. I just had yeah. to sleep outside two times last year, but like, you just look back and you can't help but smile or laugh. Even we went on vacation together and we had to go running together for like hours every single morning. So, I mean, it's stuff like that that you look back at. And a lot of people can't say that they've done that with their parent. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure. And, and I know he's proud of you because uh, he's told me many times. <laughs> he, I think I surprised him. I ended up doing so he ran the marathon. I ran the ultra marathon, um, which is that's just the one. The ultra that they had was a 50K and it's um it was 31 miles. So I was like, I'm going to do that because I'm not one that would sign up for that around here. And I ended up coming in first place out of all the females, which was like, it was so crazy to me. That's why I say like, 
I look back at this time and I was so down because I had broken my leg. It took me like nine months till I could even run again. And it's just these things that you get back in your life that feel like a gift. I really, I didn't set out to be fast. I just didn't know even how to pick a goal. I was like, what's average? Okay, I'll do better than that. Like, <laughs> and <laughs> that's great. So, yeah, it's really turned into like, I, I love it. I really love it. So it's That's been awesome. super cool. So thanks for sharing that. So let me ask you this question. So you have a purpose, you have a message. What message you want to get out there for? And I'm assuming that you said it's with women or girls with eating disorders, but what's the message you want to share with people? So I, I guess I want to start by saying, you know, I, I am a, a private person. I never thought that I would be coming out sharing things that I had been through. I do believe that there are no coincidences. And I do believe that God has put things in my life to just be like, no, you're, you're not going to just live, uh, you know, you have to get out there and share. And I you think got work to do. <laughs> I do. I have had a close friend tell me recently, um, you are doing others a disservice if you don't share your story. My running coach told me that, like, you know, running and training, anybody can do that. But getting over my fear of speaking and putting myself out there and sharing my story, I have the power to change someone's life. So I guess my message would be if you have a story, share it because I have been learning just by being vulnerable that a hopeful story matters so much. Like just to see I'm a normal person, you wouldn't look at me and think that I went through any of the crap that <laughs> I did, but it's crazy how things do end up working out. And my message, if you're going through it, would be to never give up and that your pain is for a purpose. I always say that God didn't give me an easy life, but he gave me the power to weather any storm. So I feel that whatever you are going through, you'll find the purpose in the end. Just hang in there. Wow, that's powerful. And I love, love you. You know, the uh, weather any storm. I remember Matthew Kelly saying a tree with strong roots can weather any storm. And, I, mm -hmm. and I, you're getting those roots, you're planting those roots, you're getting them, you know, gr you know, grounded into that, that dirt and because you, you are, you are, you have weathered a storm and uh, you're going to help others. I mean, so I, I guess you, you kind of answered to some extent, but I'm going to ask this question anyway, because I ask everybody this question and, and, and I got to figure out a way to ask it differently because I think the answer is going to be yes or a lot, but anyway, where or how much more chiseling do you think you got going on in your life from God and what might that look like? I will always be a work in progress. So, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, um, I think for me that looks like, and I already know the answer because I've been contemplating it for a while. I would like to be more involved with the church that I go to. I um, want to join a small group and build those kind of relationships more. Um, so yes, that's. That's what I can say I, I do need to do. Just finding the time to like fit it in. But, you know, there's no perfect time. If you want it to happen, you have to make it happen. And and just by you being more vulnerable and some, maybe it's, maybe it's this podcast, maybe it's another podcast you get on. And as you continue to share this message, you're going to help people. And there, there's no doubt, there's no question in my mind, your story is going to impact and help people. And my encouragement to you is just to keep on doing it. Keep on doing Thank it. Keep you. on doing it. Because uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, I like what you said, you know, that you realize that I have the power to, you know, help somebody or impact people. And like you said, you're doing a disservice if you don't share. And mm -hmm. uh, you're, this, you're just scratching the surface. Okay, yeah, just I'm just, surface. just getting started. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll say this and that she's not ready yet, but, uh, but Katie, she's got, I think she's got a book in her future. And uh, <laughs> I, I want to write a book. We'll have to get together and talk about that, but that's something in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. So like she's on fire. She's, it's so awesome to see. It's so awesome to hear. And uh, yeah, I see her, I see your Instagram post every now and then it's all this motivational stuff, you know, so I'm, so, I'm so happy for you. So if it's okay, I'm so proud of you. I know your parents are proud of you. And uh 
you know, if somebody if, if somebody wanted to reach out to you that to, to maybe is lonely and is, is struggling with something like this or a parent has a child that's struggling with something like this, would you be open to somebody reaching out to you? And how would they get a hold of you? Of course. Um, Instagram is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me because I'll check my messages. Um, and you can find me at at, at Katie Killy. So at K-A-T-I-E. K-I-L-I. There you go. And Katie Killy is killing it. That's awesome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so Katie, thanks so much for being here. You were awesome. Well, I appreciate you. it. Thank Your you. Your first podcast, you killed it. <laughs> and and uh, I'm grateful to be able to, to share this with you and for you. And uh, you're going to impact a lot of people. So thank you, Katie. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm forever grateful for this opportunity. So thank you. You're awesome. And then, and then Katie, as I end every podcast, let's go get chiseled. Until next time, let's go get chiseled. <laughs> All right. Talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye.